And now to a real entrepreneur. In a world first, next week, Peter Bond, the chief executive of Link Energy, will fly a jet from Perth to Chinchilla in Queensland over three days using Jet A1 fuel created by Link's combined technologies, underground coal gasification, or UCG, and gas to liquids. And Peter Bond joins me now from Brisbane. Peter, welcome. Thanks, Tiki. Well, well, you sound a little bit like Australia's answer to Richard Branson. What do you want uh, to achieve from the flight, uh, apart from obviously stay up in the air? Um, yeah, that would be, the, that'd be a, a good, good start. Um, I guess to just demonstrate uh, how good the Jet A1 fuel is that we're creating at our Chinchilla site. And um, to, as part of it, we also get to... Uh, demonstrate and get a number of facts and figures through the flight. So it's a, it's a genuine demonstration, but also it's a full stop to several years of hard work. Have you got some big players watching? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We've, uh, we've got a number of commitments and uh, joint ventures under discussion um, around the world, so we, we always have uh, a few people watching. Now, this comes on top of the diesel dash that you did last year, uh, roughly the, the same journey, but on wheels. We've heard a lot about coal seam gas, much less about uh, UCG. What do you see as the potential for this in Australia and globally? Well, the, the big advantages of UCG is we, we extract um, the entire tonne of coal and turn that into uh, gas. Uh, so we, we get about 22 times more energy out of the same square kilometre of ground. So we have a far smaller impact and get a lot more uh, energy out of it. The other thing is there generally is always coal somewhere. So you can always extract a lot of energy somewhere in someone's backyard, some country's backyard. So the advantage of UCG is we can do it in a lot of countries that need energy. So it's, a, it's on the, uh, right on the crest of, of, of moving forward globally. Well, China is one area that you have uh, got involved with. Big break came last month. I know Hong Kong's Golden Concord uh, bought in 5% of your company, Link Energy, and you, you struck a deal on the first UCG plant in China. Uh, what's the program from here? Um, well, basically, we're selecting a site. There are a couple of sites we're looking at. Uh, GCL owned sites in Inner Mongolia and Shanxi province. We're looking at both those areas and uh, we're narrowing down the best site. Uh, once that's got the tick, we'll um, move forward in constructing the first UCG um, commercial application in China. So it's very exciting. Now, on the, the day of that announcement, I think Lynx shares went up about 30%. They're now back to where they were before that announcement at about 106. Uh, why? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure. But I think it's basically that the market wants to see execution. So there are two or three things that Link has uh, on, the, on the boil at the moment. UCG in China is one of them. Um, oil in North America is another. Um, and some coal assets. And I think at the end of the day, the market's looking for execution on a couple of fronts. So if, as we execute that uh, particular... Um, contract, then I, I think you'll start to see a, a response in the share price accordingly. The other issue, of course, with, with uh, UCG is environmental issues. And I know there's, there's quite a lot of confusion between underground coal gasification and coal seam gas. Um, can you briefly tell us the difference? Um, basically, uh, coal seam gas is where they're just extracting the methane from the coal. Um, and underground coal gasification is where we physically consume the coal and turn it into gas by heating the coal up underground. Mm. So we get a lot more energy per square uh, kilometre uh, and we get a lot more efficient use of it, but at the same token, they both have their own uses. But, yeah, um, but you're, so you're, you're not using nearly as much land, which of course, of course is an issue uh, from, from a farming point of view. You're not covering as much ground. But, um, but you did have um, a very difficult year, certainly in, in 2010, uh, when, when Cougar Energy uh, had that uh, uh, groundwater contamination scare, which basically shut them down. And then you had Carbon Energy's pilot, pilot suspended. Are there still a lot of concerns in the community, do you think? Um, 
I think any new, uh, any new technology or any new process that's been evolving over a number of years, um, there are the local questions more than concerns. Our community, our neighbours are more than happy with Link Energy and how we've behaved over the last decade. We've been very successful and we continue to be. Though we're, we're much larger than the two competitors you've mentioned mm. um, and, and we literally have like 120 odd people doing nothing but working on that. Our own environmental engineers, our own uh, hydro geologists, etc. So we've taken a very different approach to the, the two um, other companies. But yeah. uh, the, the Queensland Government own scientific panel pronounced Link Energy as the uh, uh, world's best practice at what we do. And there's a reason behind that. It's, it's more of a philosophy. But, but certainly right. working hard to ensure that, that we, we allay everybody's concerns and we are um, world's best is, is one of the big things that we concentrate on. Finally, briefly, what does the mining tax do for you? And what does the carbon tax do for you? Well, unfortunately, tax doesn't do a lot for anybody, really. Um, but uh, I think uh, the mining tax, well, um, not a lot for the next year or two. We we fairly neutral on that on that issue. Carbon tax, unfortunately, scares away a lot of uh, investment and makes uh, doing business that much more difficult. So I, it's it's definitely made life more complicated. That's for sure. It hasn't hasn't made it easier. Mm. It's a very challenging industry. I wish you luck, Peter Bond. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks so much, Tiki.